Welcome to the EXP group discussion of ACCA paper F2 on management accounting uh, based on the EXP group's express notes. Now today we'd like to spend a few minutes to talk about business mathematics and uh, spreadsheets. Now paper F2 is not very heavy on mathematical uh, techniques, but there are a couple of things that one should take note of. Now, the reason why we use uh, quantitative techniques, among other things, is to be able to handle issues connected to risk and probability. And there are various techniques to, to do that. Uh, just from a conceptual point of view, uh, one makes a distinction between the notion of risk versus uncertainty, even though the two are uh, considered to be synonymous with each other in everyday life, but we will be uh, focusing on the notion of risk because the risk is quantifiable in the sense that we have some track record, we have some data from the past, from experience that we can employ in order to uh, measure risk in the future. In contrast, one speaks of uncertainties not being, not capable of being quantified. Let's just call this unquantifiable. And because it's unquantifiable does not mean that we should um, ignore it altogether. For example, the um, when we think about the possibility or probability of earthquakes happening, uh, there may be a ver it's a very imprecise science with regard to the determination of the probability, uh, the, the quantifiable probability of an earthquake, and therefore we would have to uh, consider such an event to be uncertain. The same thing is certainly true with regard to um, political revolutions. Uh, if one looks at the uh, uh, events in the Middle East, for example, and the surprising outbreak in a number of countries of uh, social and, and, and political uh, disruptions, one can certainly say that um, such events probably fall into the category of um, unmeasurable uncertainty, or we could also call it subjective probability. Anyway, leaving aside these um, these, these qualitative uh, distinctions, let's just look at one um, basic uh, method which is used for calculating uh, possible outcomes weighted by the probability of each outcome. It's called the expected value technique. Now the expected value technique requires us to be able to uh, define a finite number of outcomes which add up to 100% of the possible outcomes and to assign values to each of those outcomes. In this case, we have, for example, um, the possible uh, resulting profits and or losses uh, for each outcome. Here we can see there are four outcomes which have various levels of profit associated with them and one outcome which, has a, uh, which carries a loss with it. And corresponding to these various outcomes, we have, we're, we're in a position to be able to assign probabilities, and one can see that the probabilities here add up to 100%. Therefore, we're defining pretty much a, a finite universe that has um, a number of outcomes with values assigned and associated probabilities. When we have this such a table set up, then we can multiply across to determine for each outcome the expected value by multiplying the outcome by the probability. For the mathematicians uh, among our candidates, we could write this out as being the outcome x times the probability associated with each outcome and adding these all together, this is the sigma notation, in order to derive an expected value. We can see here, for example, that these different outcomes weighted, weighted by the probabilities gives us an overall expected value 
equal to just over 402. Now we can see from uh, the results here that the, res uh, that the 402 represents kind of an averaging, a weighted average of the outcomes because when we run the or operate for a period, we can see that the outcomes are either going to be, they're going to vary from either a high of 766 or with a 2% poss uh, probability uh, result in a loss of 230. None of the outcomes actually correspond to the expected value itself. It's just a mathematical um, averaging of these various outcomes. Therefore, the expected value uh, method has only uh, has real significance if we're going to operate a repeated game and therefore are in a position to average the outcomes over a period of time. If we're talking about a one-shot game, in other words, we operate a, a project one time with one specific outcome, then the expected value uh, actually adds a little value to the quality of a decision that we would make as to whether to go into the uh, project or not. Uh, paper F2 also captures um, regression analysis as another um, method. In other words, we need to have a basic understanding of uh, statistics for uh, used for business. In the case of linear regression analysis, we're talking about a statistical tool here that results in an equation that describes a line, so-called line of best fit to connect uh, sets of observations. The equation that results is typically in the form of y equals a plus bx where x, for example, could refer to the level of output that we are planning for, and y could represent the total costs associated with levels of output. And if we think back to our, uh, the distinction we made earlier between uh, fixed and variable costs, in this equation, B could refer to the variable cost per unit, and A would correspond or be the algebraic expression for the fixed costs in this relationship. So in using linear regression analysis, um, we would determine what the values would be of X and Y, A and B. X, in this case, as the output variable, would also be the independent variable in this relationship because we would define different levels of output and we would observe the resulting level of costs. Therefore, Y would be, in mathematical terms, considered the dependent variable. Now, the uh, specific um, determination of A and B, X and Y, and the resulting uh, linear regression line is given through the, the use of formulas which we will not um, uh, repeat here in, in this discussion, but which are available on a formula sheet which is included in um, in the classroom discussion, obviously, and also in the uh, preparation materials for the exam for F2. So that's something that the candidate does not have to memorize. Uh, similarly, there are some other concepts here uh, connected with uh, linear regression analysis, such as the correlation coefficient which measures the strength of the linear association between variables and the coefficient of determination, which is explaining 
the degree to which the variation in the dependent variable, that means y in the above case, can be explained by changes in the independent variable x. Just to summarize, what we have discussed here are the key uh, basic statistical techniques that uh, the candidate will become familiar with uh, in preparation for the F2 exam. Finally, it's worth mentioning that um, the use of spreadsheets is clearly a basic skill that uh, most business people should, um, should have some degree of mastery over. And therefore, uh, and there are uh, exam questions which will address um, the use of spreadsheets, particularly uh, the creation of formulas and uh, cell definitions when, when doing operations on Excel spreadsheets. So the candidate is um, well advised to review and to understand the basic uh, functions, for example, that are used in uh, Excel spreadsheets in, in the building of uh, uh, tables and the uh, processing and manipulation of, of tables for calculation purposes.